from the City of Angels, you are listening to the James Salazar Media Podcast. On today's episode, we will be doing headlines from the world of futurism. So let me strike the music and I'll meet you on the other side. Salazar Media Podcast, where pop culture, politics, and futurism collides. Hi, I'm your host, James Salazar, a.k.a. The Media. What's up, savages? We're going to do some headlines from the world of futurism. We're going to go to futurism.com and read the headlines, the latest headlines. And uh, there's a quite a bit. Uh, we haven't gotten to it in a long while. So there's a lot that needs to be read and a lot that needs to be said. I am rhyming like a beast today. So, my friends, let's get to it. So the first headline, study universal basic income won't make people work less. And... Uh, I guess the preliminary results are in. In 2017, a random selected group of 2,000 Finns who received 560 euros, about $635, worked on average the same amount as compared to control groups that didn't receive any funds. Now, um, I think they don't understand why people need universal basic income. Uh, it is to supplement a society that's been automated out of labor. So the idea is that there is no jobs. So the idea they would work less and, and them solving that problem or coming to some conclusion is not setting up the right parameters. The right parameters, there is no work. Uh, and those who work... Um, won't have a job. I mean, those who are working will have the only jobs and there will be tons, millions of jobs that are not there because they've been automated out. They're obsolete. They don't need humans to do them anymore. Therefore, those who don't have work will still receive an income. What would be their motivation to learn a more enhanced skill to get an education that would give them the same amount of money if they did nothing. First of all, I don't believe that we're going to need universal income. I believe capitalism always has the answer. I think um, we will eventually become a space-bearing bearing people, and, uh, and there will be plenty of jobs uh, needed to be done that human beings are not ready to relinquish to robots. We still want to have the adventure we, st- we still find purpose in doing things for ourselves. So, you'll see a lot of people, you know, and the market is going right now towards people who are being trained in code or fixing robots and, um, and, Mining, and there might be machines that that mine up in space, but uh, there'll be places that need to make these machines. And anything that needs a a more enhanced tactical, technical aspect to creating something, it's going to need humans. And those jobs that do monotonous, tireless, sweatshop type of work, um, those are going to be automated out. And there will be an adjustment. And the second thing that was, was wrong with universal income, they're always going to look for the rich to pay for it. 
they're going to demand that they take a bigger portion of their profit. They give everyone else a basic universal income. This is, people, this is worse than taxes. Taxes given to people. Taxes taken and given to people who, uh, for entitlements or for um, welfare or... Uh, this is this is worse because it guarantees every American, every American, a universal basic income, and they will fund it with the taxes of rich people. Now, rich people, which people, which most liberals don't understand, are people too, and they have what they call post-tax money. Money that's already been taxed by the government. And they will live on that post-tax money as long as they can, but they won't invest in a uh, in an economy where they want to take the majority of their profits to socially engineer, to so- to engineer society in the way they think it should be. Well, sooner or later, uh, and if, if it doesn't ever turn, and they use up all their savings, they'll just jump on the universal basic income, and then there'll be nobody paying for universal income, and everybody will be on it, and, and then the dollar... They'll start printing more money to to meet uh, to cover the people who they fantasize was gonna reinvest in society. It's, it is beyond me <laughs> that you'll slap the hand of, of of the profit maker and then him him and expect him to act a uh, charitable. By investing, reinvesting in, in, in the economy. I, I don't get it. <clears throat> you slap a uh, rich man in the face, he's going to take his money and go home. That's it. That's the story of, of uh, economics. You either have a friendly business environment or you don't. And the, when you don't have a friendly business environment, uh, often through historical and time memorial Economies do bad. And when you make it very easy for people to open businesses and uh, fulfill their dreams, corporations to hire more people, the economy does good. Granted, those corporations and people might get a little greedy and and try to take advantage of people. But overall, it's better for a society to have a good economy than a bad economy. And we already have laws that try to keep those things from happening. So, yeah, universal income is theft, no matter how you look at it. And uh, the next headline is, China thinks AI will make us will make its military as powerful as the United States of America. As strong as America's military. There's an acknowledgement. Well, we are a hyperpower. There's never been a country as powerful as the United States of America at this point in any time in history. We are stronger than the next five countries, powerful countries under us. We have aircraft carriers, more aircraft carriers than the next 10 countries under us. Same with our planes. Same with our submarines. And same with our nuclear weapons. Um, we're a hyperpower. It's never been, there's never been an, our equal yet. 
Rome wasn't? If just two of Rome's en- enemies came against them at the same time, Rome would have fallen. And in saying that, Rome fell with just one enemy at their gates. They were too spread out, and they weren't able to defend their borders, and they lost ground, and before they knew it, the barbarians took them over. I think it was the barbarians that defeated, defeated them. Um... I digress. But my point about this, you see, everybody's going for artificial intelligence and China, 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 as Donald Trump will say, their AI is going to be used to figure out how to beat America. They're going to give it carte, carte blanche abilities So it can figure that out. But what they don't understand, that while it's figuring out how to beat the United States, it's going to figure out how to beat China too. And this rogue AI who's given all the powers to explore how to beat America can easily turn on China. See, this is my biggest fear. It's not that Americans are going to create an AI system uh, that will destroy us because we, is, like I said, it's woven into our mythos. It's woven into our uh, our legends in, in our movies and our TVs that AI run amok will destroy society. So we, in the back of our brains, are always want, looking. All of our our geniuses are. You know, there some of them are like, no, this is dangerous. The other ones are like, no, it's going to be good, but. But those who say AI is going to be good have in the back of, them, of their mind that they have to be very wary that, that their words don't come back to bite them and they're wrong. So they are watching intently, making sure people are doing AI with intelligence, with morality, and with limitations, which China has none I guarantee you, they're just saying, get that shit going, money's no object, Uh, let's figure out how this AI can make us a most powerful economy, more powerful military, more powerful culture, whatever. It's going to have AI do everything for them if it's possible, and they don't have our mythos. They don't have a history of, of since the eighties, and even before in our in our books, of AI turning on humans. They are acting like, you know, it's like, and for the I don't want to talk crap, but when Chinese get a hold of something. They, they they go crazy with it. I mean, once capitalism came in, every endangered species had to be served up for dinner for those rich Chinese people who just got into capitalism. Um, their moral responsibilities are sort of skewed. And these are people that are messing with AI. It's very scary. And China thinks AI could make its military as powerful as the United States. That should tell us something, people. How how they are dealing with their AI systems that could run amok and take over the whole world. Because it's not gonna stop. If 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 China makes a mistake, it's not gonna stop with China. It's gonna stop it's gonna keep on going until it rules the whole world or it controls the whole world. You know, we don't know how it's going to perceive us. It might control us just a little bit. What if it can control all our, our, our economies and bankrupts us? What if it you know, starts a war? What if uh, it determines that this chess piece over here, this small country is a chess piece. Let's just obliterate that chess piece so there'll be world peace. So the bigger 
bigger dogs won't go to war. Oh, and it, it would look at that as a more moral situation that this is for the highest good. If we can take out uh, Syria and destroy everybody in Syria and just totally uh, carpet bomb that whole uh, place, uh, then the big nations like Russia and Iran and United States wouldn't be fighting over it and potentially going to war, which would cause more lives. I can definitely see AI coming to conclusions like that. So it's scary. That's all I have to say about that. Next one. Trojan horse cancer drug sneaks inside tumor cells and then kills them. That's awesome. That's the best case. According to the Iliad, the Greeks won the Trojan War by sneaking a few dozen soldiers into the city of Troy inside a giant wooden horse. Let me see. Researchers from the Institute of Cancer Research in London. New cancer drug called Tisobumbad V. Dorin. Wow, man, I, 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 I won't even attempt to say I uh, read that right. Combines chemotherapy agents with antibodies. These antibodies attach to the maker on a cancer cell surface in a way that the cause the cell to draw it in the chemotherapy drug, which then attacks the cell from inside, like a Greek Trojan Greek soldiers attaching attacking Troy. Let me read that again. This antibody attaches to the maker on a cancer cell. Once again. This antibody attacks... This antibody attaches to the marker on a cancer cell surface in a way that causes the cell to draw in the chemotherapy drug, which then attacks a cell from the inside like a Greek soldier attacking Troy. So this is exciting news. This is very exciting news. I mean, five years. I'll give you five years before rich people are curing their cancer. It'll come to us in 10 years. And and, 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 yes, it's going to suck that the people from here to 10 years will die of cancer and only rich people will have it. But without rich people buying it at these absorbent rates, it doesn't get mass produced in a way where it becomes affordable for everyone. I know this seems like a big uh, commercial for capitalism today, but... Just where the thing is going. So, yeah, that's the great news. So we're going to end it there, folks. Um, You can follow me on any of my social media accounts. Just type in James Salazar Media on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, and um, YouTube. Uh, if you uh, want to inquire about any of my services, go to jamesalazarmedia.com. Uh, if you need to contact me and tell me how you agree or disagree or whatever you think about what I said, uh, you can go to, you can write that to uh, jamesalazarmedia at gmail.com. And if you want to see what I'm doing with my singing, um, also get that at jamesalazarmedia.com. So, okay, folks, that's it. Um, I know we're not doing as many this week because I'm moving, uh, and that's always a pain in the ass. So until then, my friends, when the storms of life come against you and you find yourself on your knees, uh, I say stand tall, hold your head up high, and look into that storm and say what my sensei Jack Burton always says, give me your best shot.